Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast featuring your host Superfly and Danny Daybar is open. What's good? What's good, bro? Just fresh off the road, literally just got off a four hour drive to do this, so I'm fucking pumped. Take a little nap, nice. ready to go. Where'd you uh, end up going? I forget. Uh, so I was in Jersey, so like just back and forth. So now I'm, I'm in Rhode Island at my girl's family house. We're going to be here for a couple, uh, like four or five days. Took Friday off again, just to have like, you know, a change of pace so I can do shit, you know, while I'm like actually in other places besides Florida. So um, it's good, man. How about you? How's your uh, weekend been? What's up with uh, with your uh, staycation plans? Yeah. So this week, this past weekend was good. Um didn't do too much my girl's sister came down so we oh nice just just ate drank kicked it at at the house um but la i think california in general is going through a heat wave so it's been the hottest shit i was gonna ask you that bro like you guys like you feeling it inside or like no i got the fan on blast right now you you probably can't hear (laughs) it because the mic doesn't thankfully uh take in background noise but it's been insanely hot like to the point where i i'm shouldn't even be wearing this shirt right now i was been wearing sleeveless shirts for the past <laughs> week straight um but yeah it's, it's been unbearable i hope it ends soon but i feel i based on the forecast at least it seems like this shit's gonna last like the rest of the month at least yeah well dude at least you're not like i know you like um i know you moved obviously into your new space for like almost the past like eight months now but do i remember because i was in la this time like around this time last year it was also hot as fuck bro and like in your old space was dude it was fucking super hot down there so at least you're not like it could be worse yeah that is true um but back to the staycation thing so i'm going to utah with my family in uh two weeks nice. and i don't know why i just maybe it's just utah being like super white or something i just assume it was like a colder state uh no dude it'll be hot well, yeah be apparently the heat too. waves uh gonna be hot as shit over there too yeah because they're right next to vegas so like yeah yeah they have obviously the mountains and shit but i think yeah when it's hot in la and uh, in nevada it's the hottest fuck there too yeah so whatever we can run up the the bill on the the airbnb host ac instead of mine <laughs> yeah that'd be funny if they start fucking adding that shit like that like la airbnb is like fucking ac maintenance fee <laughs> fucking an extra hundred dollars probably but bro, so it's, you say the family, like you, wifey, and your brothers, or like mom, uncles, aunts, uh, like what's going? No, me, wifey, and then um, my dad, and two of my brothers, nice. and one of my brother's friends. Uh, so small group. Nice, dude. That'd, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be definitely a good time. And yeah, if you need any help, um, and yeah, my boy just went there. You know, you know Billy, and he just did. He went everywhere, bro. So nice. clearly, there's like mad shit to do. Even though, like, you think of like I don't think of like Salt Lake and Utah being that big. So yeah, for um, sure. If you can, I know check out Park City, Utah, because that's fire. Like this dude. Uh, I, I mean, at least when I went, bro. Yeah, this was like three years ago. But um, if things are kind of back to normal. Cause I don't think Utah has bad cases. Like Park City's fire because they have like a, a lot of fucking very nice bars, and there's like a High West Brewery, which is like a uh, a whiskey distillery kind of thing. So nice. Yeah, Park City. Yeah. I will add that to your list if you have some time. For sure. Yeah, I'll definitely add that and hit you up separately about that. Yeah, yeah we'll talk offline. Um, dude, as far as me, dude, this last week has actually been pretty dope, bro. Like. Uh, linked up with a couple friends a couple times on the, on the last episode i told you i linked up with uh, a couple boys on my tuesday off the next day i went out i do like till fucking four in the morning on thursday night and i was just like bro like literally at 3 a.m i was like bro do i really log should i log on to work tomorrow or just be like bro like it's not happening but i logged <laughs> on i worked on friday nice. uh, they got like they got 50 percent of me though like, i didn't give a fuck i'm like bro i'm here like zoom me if you want to but you know as far as any proactive work you think is happening today bro it's not happening <laughs> Um, but dude, it was fire. So my boy, I mentioned before, uh, anyone in Brooklyn or visiting Brooklyn owns a bar called Samba Street, uh, like Indian Asian fusion, um, fire drinks though, bro. So that's up. Like we fucking, you know, closed the bar down, drank there for a little bit. Then went to my, like his brother's house. We were like, these guys are literally like fucking my neighbors in India when I was in high school. So I know these motherfuckers for like 14, 15 years. So we, nice. like, we could talk for, you know, for days on that. Yeah. Um, but dude, he, I, I tried for the first time, so I highly recommend this to you and all our listeners. Natural wine. Bro, I don't know because like the pesticide or whatever you use for normal wine is removed and it's just like how like these fruits are, are fucking, you know, curated. But bro, natural wine, first of all, tastes delicious. 
and bro it's a different level of like drunkenness like i like do the alcohol i thought content. wine was already natural no but the so some most wine vineyards do use pesticides wow. and stuff like that so these natural wine vineyards don't use that so it really is just like what the earth is giving you and the minimal human intervention to bring it to you in a Wait, bottle. so does that mean if you're not drinking natural wine you're ingesting pen, uh, pesticides or like i mean i don't think you're ingesting it like in its purest form but yeah, yeah. There, there's some kind of level of pesticides that was used to you know for those crops yep. see this is what i mean when i'm like no matter what you do in life in terms of dieting yeah you're like, fucked you're, yeah, you're <laughs> fucked like you might as well just drink and eat whatever because there's all these myths about like what's good for you what's not and it's just i may not be myths, wrong but so. Yeah, I may be wrong. So someone hit us up in the comments and, you know, destroy me. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Like, it's the level of, like, pesticides and lack of human interaction with it besides just growing it, you know, and, and, and making it work. But, dude, regardless, dude, natural wine is, dude, delicious. I'm, I'm about to order a case and take it back with me to Florida because I was like, yo, whatever this is, this is it. And nice. it also just looks, like, prettier because, like, it's a lighter color. It's like, a, yeah. like it looks like the, the actual fruit as opposed to like you know the, the dark you know of the red wine so oh, yeah man, it's been good that. a lot of drinking bro i've been really trying to fucking diet hard but i've realized like bro this like these trips are just like yo maintain and like just don't become obese because bro like yeah. even when i went a week of like eating clean i'm like oh man i'm not gonna go out with my boys and like order a fucking salad and a fucking salsa yeah. i'm like bye bro right. give me the head you, you know, like, <laughs> i know that's how so i've been like, feeling with these trips too because i with quarantine i've been trying really hard to eat properly but that when you go on these these trips and stuff you just have bro, to make the best of it because like i and i'm obviously super grateful but like my my family and then sarah's my girlfriend's family like do obviously just want to take us out and like cook for us and i'm not gonna be like no like i'm not gonna yeah. be a fucking terrible fucking guest i'm like yeah you can pay for that i don't care so like <laughs> but like it just i'm like bro like really like you look at the scale i'm like all right bro just don't go over this number like just stay there so right. um but yeah like even if i can't lose weight i'm just fucking working out every fucking day just to like at least maintain so yeah it's that's good. good but bro also wild shit though like you i know you're talking about the heat wave in la um but bro i think i i don't know about forward to you but like apparently someone in like Somewhere in California, I don't know if it was LA, but like got diagnosed with the bubonic plague. Did you see that? I did not, but I wouldn't be surprised because shit Damn. just turns left every time. Yeah, I got, I got, I, I think it's in LA, but I also think. Isn't what, that some like the, 1400 shit? Like, what is the bubonic plague? Yes, bro, exactly? that wiped out like millions of people. Like, fucking. Hold on. Oh, don't tell me they removed this shit because it was fake. I hope it was fake. Uh. I gotta find it, bro. I'll find it. No, I got it right here. California resident diagnosed with bubonic plague. Um, South Lake Tahoe. Is that in LA? Uh, no, but that's that's Lake Tahoe's in um. What the fuck is Lake Tahoe? It's definitely north. Um, okay. Okay, but yeah, confirmed resident. Um, but dude, the most shocking for me was. Oh, it's on the border. This was the first time it happened in five years. So I'm like, this shit happened five years ago and no one spoke about it? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Bro? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it said five years, so I wonder what happened within those five years. Yeah, dude, what's, like, what's happened? Like, I mean, I mean, my thing is, like, I think we spoke about this before, bro, but you gotta kill that guy. Like, I'm like, we can't just see yeah, this. No, dude, burn him like, alive. I'm sorry. You gotta take, I'm like, yeah, bro, you gotta... Like, you gotta just bite this bullet for us, bro. Like, we got <laughs> too much shit going on right now. We can't <laughs> fuck around. Man. Yeah can't take any chances just um, anyone who gets any disease that we either haven't heard of before or uh we don't want just burn them alive or just kill them and then burn them yeah dude you got exactly you gotta take them out like i'm sorry like you know the, sometimes we all gotta sacrifice in our lives and like, oh, you're, you, this is your time <laughs> <laughs> um speaking about corona and all that shit though have you um I think last week and I think tonight as well, like some of the uh, the Democratic convention stuff. Have you been tuning in at all? Unfortunately not. I've, I've just been so busy with work, but I have seen some of this stuff on Instagram from people sharing and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I did see, I don't know if it was, te it was part of the convention, but like it was Michelle Obama and a bunch of spe people speaking back to back, kind of endorsing Biden. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, and, no, all, that's what they're all doing and shit. Like, yeah. yo, that'd be fucked up. They have like one guy that did. It's like, yo, fuck yeah. him. Like, just vote for somebody. That's I mean, actually, I wish it would be dope if like one person was like, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to go off the rails and say what I feel. But <laughs> uh, I mean, it did feel a little performative in a lot of ways, even though I love like Michelle Obama as like a person and I think she's amazing. But um, I'll say the other candidates, it's. It, I don't know. It just seems very like forced. I guess is the best word I can think of. Yeah, I think like forced, scripted. Yeah. Uh, just because, like, again, it's it feels like when you That's see pretty. them at an actual convention, it's like you're feeding off the crowd. Whereas this feels like it's a fucking Zoom, yeah. you know, video they're fucking doing. Yeah. So it's like it's never gonna be the same as like if this guy is killing it or right. they're fucking terrible like it, it's yeah. all gonna come across um you know very scripted even michelle th- came across like i saw hers um i saw aoc's i think it was yesterday um yeah it just comes across pretty scripted but again i mean i just hope this guy wins um just to i mean give us a better chance of whatever the future is because you start thinking about this shit how like again like the the bubonic plague five years ago obviously we're gonna get to music in a second but I think Travis Scott's uh, days before rodeo mixtape dropped five years ago. To think about the amount of shit that could fucking happen in five years, and like think yeah. about us with like Trump, like no one thought on our worst day four years ago that this is what the fuck we'd be dealing with. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we were like, yeah, like, all right, well, fuck it, like let's just see what happens. Like you know, he's a billionaire, he might figure it out. Yeah. And it's like holy shit, this is bad. Time so, okay. flew by, by the way. Time flew by, bro. So when it comes to to Trump, I guess one thing one thing I never thought about because I guess the the frustration with people I know who are against him has been is and I haven't been in tune with politics other than like following Andrew Yang and shit um, and seeing stuff posted on Instagram, which I always try to fact check, but no one could ever pinpoint and I still can't pinpoint the good and bad that Trump has done within those four years like I. I don't think the average person can list those things down. Um, Like the good things he's done or the bad things? Both. I don't think, I feel like the average person doesn't know much of what his administration has actually done beyond the stupid tweets and stuff. Yeah, I mean, my thing with the bad things, I mean, I know there's, there has to be good things, but I feel like there's, there's, there was a stretch there. There still is. That the amount of like wrongfully convicted black people he's released out of prison in his time, I think, actually is like higher than like anyone. Um, oh. So like his, yeah, I think he's actually put a lot of stuff that in prison reform that actually is against most Republicans. I think most Republicans actually profit off like the prison system. Mm-hmm. But dude, as far as the bad things, bro, like I mean, I think the handling of this coronavirus is like yeah, the most second to none, bro. Recent but and then, obvious. Yeah, the most recent and obvious, and then also just the the lack of uh, sympathy for those who were affected by like, all the fucking you know cop killings in, during his tenure, and dude, to call the Black Lives Matter movement like evil, nasty people, um, and like just like the whole dividing of America, bro. Like I feel like he knows exactly who his core audience is and is only talking to them, and mm-hmm. is willing to divide the rest of the country. And I feel like that was a thing he did at every chance he could. Um, what so to do? I, I feel like I mean I don't know about a bad thing. That's more like a fucking terrible thing, bro. Because yeah. the other day, like we're the United States of America. Like you're from Alaska, New York, Wyoming. You should feel like we're all in this shit together, and like we should feel that way when it's not just the fucking Olympics, right? Which that shit doesn't fucking matter. Like we should yeah. feel that way when the world is literally fucking ending, but we think all right, we have a chance together, and I feel like he just never wanted that to happen for us. Yeah, no, I think that's valid and while they're not necessarily policy changes it's still has an impact and some might argue a a bigger impact by being divisive and and all of that so that definitely makes sense um at this point i I still originally i thought i could predict who was gonna win at this point i have no fucking clue no clue bro no you do i literally just i'm gonna vote and just hope that you know this shit works bro like because yeah i i have no clue because everyone's saying well you know he's nine points behind right now trump is nine points behind 
but you know what happened last time. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. I know what the fuck happened last time. So I'm like, bro, like, please, if you're going to vote, just go fucking vote. Like, um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll get probably we'll get some more videos of the uh, the uh, DMC stuff uh, over the next week. And so we'll talk about it next week. But um, nice. let's get into some music. Episode 42. We're going to call this one Certified Hit. And uh, it'll be pretty obvious why we're talking about that. So before we jump into the greatest ar- artist of our lifetime, we know who like, we're talking about. Um, dude, how do you feel about WAP going number one? Are you shocked? I feel like we predicted this on the last week's episode yeah. because just he got so many eyes so yeah. fast. But uh, thoughts on the uh, – because, I mean, when it came out, we were just a couple days in on last week's episode. So the overwhelming amount of, like, interaction and engagement that one song and video has gotten like what are your thoughts on everything yeah i mean i'm not shocked one bit uh i'm gonna assume you're not shocked i mean it's quarantine every fucking person on the planet was talking about the video like even politicians and all sorts of people had Dude, john to oliver play. did like did like started fucking freestyling some of the lines of the show of, yeah. of, on his show i was like wow okay <laughs> um i saw russell brand uh had this like philosophical debate on like female sexuality and shit so it like stirred up a lot of controversy and debate and conversation so once i saw that happening within like 24 hours i was like there's no way this isn't you're gonna gonna go number one even off of just sheer curiosity yeah um but i mean kudos to them to this day i still don't really care about this song, I'll still continue to say that uh, creatively, it wasn't, you know, high up on my uh, catalog of, of songs just because it's, I don't think it was the best song they as individuals could have put together. The video was cool, um, but that's about it. I think they. the more and more uh, I thought about it, the more I realized how crazy some of the songs and shit that aren't about female sexuality are and like I, I talked to you last night on instagram about uh or i sent you a rapper's video and like that just kind of made me think about you know yeah. a lot of this drill music and shit and it's it's all pretty bad i think it's just we're desensitized to that stuff because we've heard it for so long but like yeah. girls talking about slurping dicks and shit is uh, at least on songs is pretty new so it's it's kind of shocking and we just i guess are drawn to it more Dude, but the funny thing is, like, I feel like it's not new, bro, because I remember, like, being fucking, like, seven years old and my aunt listening to Little Kim, and that shit was, if anything, worse. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, that how shit, many like, licks and shit? Yeah, dude. Like, Talk dude, about swallowing Sprite that, cans. Yeah, dude, but even, like, yeah, like, hard, like, hard, I think she has an album called Hardcore. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the one where she's, like, on the album cover into, like, a fur coat with a bikini, legs oh, open. Yeah. Yeah. And bro, every song was essentially just about like, you know, fucking dudes rob not robbing them, but like taking their money, you yeah. know, pimping them out, blah, blah, blah. But like, yeah, dude, again, I think we we spoke about this last week. I don't think we were shocked by this, man. Like it's dude, it's two of the biggest pop artists, let alone female rappers, in fucking music right now. So this is gonna be a fucking hit. Like it's gonna uh, you know, having a number one record doesn't mean the song is a certain caliber, right? I don't think Jay Z has zero top uh top number one songs in, in his entire career uh oh i think the one time is like alicia keys in like uh oh, new know, york or whatever new york yeah new york state of, mind. state of mind yeah and exactly but besides that he's never had a number one song in his high career and you think you know are we thinking cardi b's better than jay-z so like right. again i i do I, I love cardi b i love Megan the style and I, I i appreciate the other things they've done for the culture and i do fuck with like some of their like we we, we both fuck with both of their musics this song just seemed like I said before, like we said before, very lazy. Um, you know, let's just do something very shocking right now because, you know, why the fuck not? So, again, kudos to them. Kudos to their marketing team, whoever, you know, put this whole concept together. It was always going to work. It did spark a lot of controversy, bro. Like, a lot of people were, like, on either ends of it. It's like, no, they're being fucking whores. And, like, <laughs> why can't we be whores? Like, so I was like, bro, yeah. like, fuck. So, yeah. like, dude all good man like that's that's how you fucking you know people aren't talking about you you're probably not doing it good enough so kudos to them um i don't know how long it's going to be number one but you know again it's uh they had a moment and and the moment lasted has it lasted at least two weeks up until now so we'll see what they do with that moving forward i feel Uh, like uh the term wap by the way has 
kind of infiltrated memes and shit. I've seen oh, it's, it's like, all over pop referring culture. to it. Yeah. So now bitches, uh, sorry, not bitches, women or thoughts on Instagram are going to start using that phrase a whole lot uh, Dude, when it comes the to themselves. Is- where they even like, uh, I don't know if this was again the timing of it, or they obviously wait for the song to be a hit, but then they release, or I don't know how fucking TikTok and Reels work, but then like three days later, there's like an official dance now on TikTok to WAP, which is like, you know, making this song like another fucking few hundred gazillion fucking views. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, I think WAP is gonna be a part of pop culture for a minute here, bro. Like, yeah. cause think about other phrases that just like stuck around, you know what I mean? Like WAP, I mean, I feel like this is that, like one of the few terms that like women actually have to use in like a sexual way that's not directly just, offensive. Yeah, super so, direct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I think this actually may stick around for a while. Again, which is fine, bro. Like I have no issues with like, this is, perfect like dude again maximize your value while you can while you're young yeah and if people fucking cool with their seven-year-old daughter dancing on the floor of this shit with their legs in the air nope you're a better <laughs> parent than me so like <laughs> so i don't want to like tell you um but speaking of certified hits i'm fucking i'm i'm giving my heat of the week away early i'm gonna fuck uh drake released a new single uh laugh now cry later featuring little dirk personally thought it was, the rollout was amazing so i don't want to overtake this section so let me hear your thoughts on the song yeah. the video predictions for what this does on the charts thoughts on his album coming out which we just found out is called certified lover boy um thoughts on the whole thing bro yeah i thought the the rollout was phenomenal um but i don't know if this is an unpopular opinion i haven't really checked but i actually liked uh my favorite part of the song is Lil dirk's verse do they uh, have like a petition out to make it longer or some shit Oh shit! Well then, I, I guess I do agree with the popular yeah, it's like opinion. Yeah, they petition online. It's like twenty-five thousand signatures. <laughs> yeah. Make it long. And I, and I'll be honest, I, I never was a huge fan of Lil Durk. I always thought he was good, but I never like checked for his music I like that. I heard a couple of songs in his most recent album that mm-hmm. actually got pretty good reviews. Um, but nice. besides that, never, never really checked them out. Yeah, but yeah, his verse, in my opinion, was fire. Um, in terms of the the video i don't know for some reason i realized i'm not like the biggest fan of drake's videos i think they're well like produced and have like funny goofy uh concepts and stuff but i never find myself like in awe i i feel like there's just a lot of like cameos and like it's 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 almost like a short film but not a short film that really I vibe with or care about that much. Like okay. in the one video he had the the kids from uh fucking what's that shit called? Uh Degrassi. I mean I I didn't watch that yeah, show yeah. so that had no effect on me and then I'm this upset. with uh yeah. I thought the only funny thing in this video was uh what's his name? Um the football player who tackled his ass. Oh, uh Beast Mode Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch. Lynch. Yeah. yeah, when he tackled him I thought that was cool but like the other stuff I thought was kind of just like drawn out and unnecessary and maybe it's because the songs rarely seem to have anything to do with the video or something um but i think in terms of this rollout and him announcing the album and all that uh for me personally i feel like drake is beginning to like plateau and enter that like jay-z stratosphere where he kind of passes on the baton and disappears and like he's gonna have to make brand new concepts and stuff to keep at least my interest because because now i'm like this stuff isn't hitting the same uh like his last album or project dark demo late tapes or whatever demo lanes forget the, what the fuck the name was yeah um that didn't resonate with me so i'm really really hoping this album hits and i think for me at least this album will be the judge of like whether or not i think he's gonna plateau or like continue to surprise us solid okay so like i would say it's a little dirt thing though like to like, your point i think that's like the greatness of drake i think maybe because like if you think about when drake first popped on the scene yeah he was signed to little wayne and stuff but dude he also went on tour with fucking jay-z at like the age of like 22 and it was like what the fuck like why is jay-z putting his arm around this fucking nobody not even signed to his label right so i, I think that's like him having little dirt on this song is just another way of I don't know about passing the baton because at first I don't think he's passing shit, but just <laughs> not being so secure that he wants to fucking shed light on these all up and coming stars, bro. Like 
Because I really think, obviously, little baby is like you know having a great year. But dude, if I don't think if he had if he didn't have that song with Drake back in the day, what uh, yes indeed. And bro, I, I really don't think people are even checking for little baby the way they they've been checking for him ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's done that for countless fucking artists, bro. Like I, I'm pretty sure Little Dirk's numbers went through the fucking roof the moment this song came out. Oh yeah. He, he's been rapping for like ten years, but like the yeah. moment this song came out, they're like, Yo, who's oh, his price went the fuck up. Oh, exactly, bro. That's the Drake effect, bro. As far as the video, bro. Okay, this might just be because I'm a fucking Nike head, but bro. That's the ultimate flex where you fucking have the entire Nike campus to yourself and you pull up in two unreleased concept Mercedes-Benz cars that will never hit the streets, like, ever. Uh -huh. Bro, the flex was unreal, bro. The flex yeah. was unreal. Yeah. So just that alone had me fucking like, dude, this guy's a fucking, this guy is it, bro. Like, wherever you want to be in life, like, this is fucking it. <laughs> and then I think where it tied in for me is like, yeah, dude, I can have all these things, I can enjoy it. But I'm also laughing now, you know, and I'm also, I'm also crying later because, dude, life is never perfect. So that's how, that's how I interpret it. Again, this might be the, the avid Drake fan in me just saying, like, find the connections and support him yeah. no matter what. It's your audio but, theory. Yeah, it's my audio theory, bro. I feel like the, I feel like the song, and dude, because even when he was, like, crying and stuff, and, like, dude, the, and, like, you have so many funny parts where he just looked at a whole look at the camera and saying, baby, I was like, bro, this shit is, like, yeah. dude, this is, like, okay, those, meme those worthy. moments were dope. Yeah, dude, these are meme-worthy. These are gonna, you know, create a bunch of fucking, um, you know, quotable captions on Instagram, which, again, I mean... Again, I know it's not like the end all be all things, but that's where you know your relevancy is in the pop culture, right? So like, you know, are people fucking quoting your lines? So I don't know, bro. I think that was the rollout's great. I'm super excited for the album. Um, I, I really, I, I agree with you in the sense I do think this is a career defining moment for him in the sense of, is he gonna have another run like the run he just had, right? Cause yeah. all the odds are stacked against him, bro. No one has done that, right? So think about, we were talking about four years ago with Trump and you know, five years ago with Travis, right? There's no fucking way this kid who went from Degrassi to fucking, you know, uh, you know, being with Cash Money thought he'd be here 10 years later. The, the odds were against him then. But dude, for you to be at this point and then go even higher, which I don't even know what is higher than where the fuck he's at right now yeah. for another 10 years or nine years, bro, that's gonna be wild. So I'm, I'm just really curious to see how he keeps evolving and what he'd start doing because he really from what i get from him so to your jay-z comparison like i i always saw jay-z as a businessman yeah. right and he was a great rapper but he always had his hand in other shit even from like back in the day whereas drake does do other shit but dude he always focuses on like the music and like yo i'm doing this right i feel like we got that same vibe from the rap radar interview he did where it's like bro like i'm really a fucking rapper like i'm out here like this is my life so yeah i can i can't i can see him fucking even if his next three albums are flops not just like all right man let me do a little fucking invest in like properties and now i'm like yo he's i think he's gonna keep fucking going until like he really can't fucking go anymore yeah. so um but yeah definitely i think i agree with, him, with a career defining part but bro speaking of drake because um i don't know if you've been doing this a lot with like sarah or just like family at home and friends but like there's obviously not that much shit to watch on TV if you don't want to just binge a fucking thing for like 10 weeks straight. Yeah. So we have moments we're drinking and we'll just put on YouTube and just like pick an artist and just like, you know, just fucking go through videos. Bro, from 2008 to like 2011, yo, Cash Money was putting this boy Drake to work, bro. <laughs> like, yo, we, we literally listened to like 15 different songs that he was featured on. Uh -huh. And this was like pre like, Drake like really going the fuck off. Like I was yeah. like, wow, this motherfucker was a slave to Birdman, bro. Yeah. Like DJ Cal was like, yo, I need another one. Like, bro, like this yeah. shit was like not. Oh, no, I was you like, could no. not avoid Drake at, during oh. those like five years or whatever it was. Bro, my yeah, my sophomore junior year college for like the next like six years, like bro, yeah. every because that's when when Cash Money was really like running shit. Yeah. And, like and it it was a Cash Money song, like it was a Little Wayne verse and a Drake hook. Like, you needed a Drake hook. Like, if you don't have a Drake hook, your shit yeah. was a flop, bro. Like, and I never got sick of it because he worked with so many different artists. Mm -hmm. The sound was different. You have either had, like, a super aggressive verse um, if he was rapping with, like, a Meek Mill or something. And then he would do, like, the lovey-dovey shit with Rihanna and whoever else. So, like, you got 
all sides of him and and even like Aston Martin music where you have like ball shit but then he's yep. like singing it's like yeah. oh, what the fuck like how you can't miss motherfucker like this yep. and the crazy thing is all those years in the back of my mind I'm like is this his last year like is this his peak this motherfucker just kept going up going, if bro. anything exponentially kept going bro like it's fucking crazy bro like i really think this motherfucker's a cheat code bro like yeah like at least dude looking back and looking at now like bro if he's on the track like dude it's a fucking hit yeah no and, he's like, got ghost riders from the future uh bro. taking time machines back and he's just singing the shit dude yeah because think about it he's always been ahead of the fucking wave unless like he is the wave maker you know what i mean like he is the fucking trendsetter because dude it was when he started doing that whole like caribbean jamaican thing where like the dance hall scene in America really took the fuck off, right? But it was fucking Drake on you know, the Views album that you know had Wiz Kid, so he had the Afrobeat thing, and he's always in, and Drake is always with his like random Jamaican accent on a certain song. He's like, yo, what the, is this the new vibe? And then yeah. it was, and then fucking PopCon went from like artists you only knew if you were from you know Jamaica to fucking like top five song on Billboard. Like, what the fuck? Like, when did this happen? So yeah, it's it's pretty impressive, bro. Yeah, shout out to Drake. Cool to him. Shout out to Drake. Yeah, definitely. I mean, certified lover boy. It's and Nike. Great. And Nike. Oh my God, bro. The <laughs> funny thing is, like, the moment I saw the video, I told you I had a Nike plug through my nephew, uh, but he quit. So I hit him up and I sent him a video, a picture of like Lil Dirk and uh, Drake at the Nike. I'm like, yo, this could have been uh -huh. us, awesome, motherfucker. And you <laughs> fucking ruined it. <laughs> so tight when I fucking lost that discount, bro. Um, all right, man. So that's the the certified hip hop. Let's go through a couple things because it seems to be like a lot of uh, a lot of things happening uh, in the music scene right now. The thoughts on our boy T Scott. So I, I don't think he was accused of anything. So shed light on the whole like side of Prince and uh, Travis Scott um, news run that was happening a couple days ago. Um. Yeah. So basically, Travis or they revealed that Astro World was written by oh, in large uh sci High the prince um from what i understand granted written at, at in least, large or he has a lot of writing credits on the album i think a, a lot of a lot of writing credits on the album um okay. but sci High admitted to writing 80 percent of watch the throne so if that's the case i wouldn't be surprised if he wrote 80 percent of astroworld um in terms of thoughts, like I, I never really considered Travis like a lyricist, nor has he claimed to be the best lyricist. So I don't feel uh, deceived in any way. But at the same, so like if if this came out with like Pusha T or Joyner Lucas or some shit, I probably would be pissed off because I'm like, right, you motherfuckers so like, are rapping to rap. That's all you have. Yeah, yeah. You're not <laughs> singing shit. You're not doing anything but reciting words. So if you can't do that shit. I don't know what the fuck you're doing because you're not right. singing but with travis like i think one his concerts like just being an entertainer in that regard takes a whole lot of talent um and then his his melodies and just the way he sings with auto-tune and shit is something that not everyone can do so right now, everyone i would never discredit him shit. yeah and i'm sure he, he's i mean he has his own credits on there so i'm sure he's coming up with a ton of shit um and bringing his own ideas to the table but uh for me at least it's just kind of revealed that a lot of our favorite artists probably aren't doing as much as we think they are um right. at least once they get to stardom i'm sure when travis was starting out he he wasn't he didn't have 10 writers and shit but at a certain point it's like if you want to become a mega star I feel like it's almost inevitable that you're going to have like a team of people feeding you ideas and shit. That's my point. Yeah. So I, I agree with that exactly. So I remember from the rap va uh, radar interview with Drake on title, like he even said that, bro. He's like, bro, if you think like I'm in the room, if I'm not, if you're an artist, you're not in the room with other people who make music, you're not taking ideas from each other. You're fucking lying to yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I wonder if it was that like, yo, you like, he's like, bro, like you've worked with Kanye forever. Connie's my people, bro. Let's just, you know, let's just fucking vibe off each other. And if you help me with some lyrics and blah blah blah, I'll give you like a writing credit. Blah. blah. Like, I mean, I, I don't. We weren't in the room. We don't. Have, we'll never know. But to your point, like, dude, yeah, I've never looked at Travis as like, dude, he's the best rapper alive. I looked at him as like, bro, this guy's probably one of the best artists around. And every song he puts out, similar to Drake, is a fucking hit. Um, yeah. 
So again, I, I don't. I, if even if he did write that this guy write most of the album, again, I, I, it's that's it gets thrown out out there. So I mean, that's why even why we're bringing it up because it's like a fucking very headline and catchy, you know, post. But dude, that could also mean that he helped them, you know, finalize a hook, you know, on every yeah. other song. Like who who really fucking yeah. knows? But because it was also weird to me, bro. Like think about all the fucking Travis Scott features. So you're telling me this motherfucker is hiring writers for features as well? Like, I don't know, that's like, it's just like kind of weird, right? Like the idea of that, like, yo, let me go get this fucking guy who doesn't write his rhymes to be on my song. Like that yeah. just seems kind of fucking, like the idea of that sounds off. Yeah, well, I mean, so I, now that I remember, uh, Sci High, I did hear part of the reference track for Sicko Mode. Mm -hmm. And he did literally say like, it was only a snippet, but he did say the whole like first four lines of like, whatever, how it goes. Um, like just the whole first oh, verse yeah, basically yeah, 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 yeah. um so that just makes me assume he wrote like 80 percent of that song which is one of the biggest songs if not the biggest on the album um but yeah like when it comes to people featuring drake on their song and travis i guess that does kind of prove that they're not doing um that they don't have ghost riders doing everything nor would i assume that in general because again no one's gonna like they had to get to this point on their own somehow like right. no one people like you and i aren't fucking hiring ghost riders to become mega yeah we're not making it tomorrow because that's it yeah. <laughs> but at the same time uh the, i could see someone featuring them for the brand power like also true. suppose they're like fuck it i, I want someone to do I already have this hook written, uh, but I want Drake to sing it, and we'll all be gravy. Like I can see that shit happening. I can even, yeah, you're true. You're right because I think we all spoke about this. Like uh, I think offline, we never got to talk about it on 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 air. But uh, when uh, Snoop Dogg admitted that Jay Z wrote the entire still DRE song for uh -huh. Dre and Snoop Dogg, you know what I mean, where like in the at the time you'd probably be like, "There's no fucking way that." But dude, pet, like, dude, Snoop Dogg said it. Like, yeah, dude, I didn't fucking write one lyric on that fucking diamond platinum song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, uh, I thought yeah, he I mean, wrote, but I didn't know. I mean, I yeah, I thought Snoop wrote, but I knew Dr. Drake didn't. And the funny thing oh, is, you I can knew hear. Oh, in fact, Drake did not write that yeah. right, any of the rhymes. No. Which is fine. I, I don't think, but he, he's never said he did it. So like, right, right. Oh, he did. Sorry, so that's fine. But you know, Snoop was known for being a fucking young aggressive lyricist so for yeah. a young well i guess not young because still dre these motherfuckers are probably yeah. in their 40s already but still for you know those motherfuckers to be on top of their game and for them to be like yeah i didn't write this shit like dude, yeah could have, there has to be like a level of confidence like if you know you could write this but you're like damn this is better so i, I wonder if like that also happens like travis and drake like do you like I know I can write my shit, but dude, this is better. So let me just fucking incorporate this into my own like way of thinking, which right. is kind of what I think Kanye does as well. I feel like I know he has a bunch of writers too, bro, but I still hold out to the idea that like, yo, maybe not gospel Kanye, but like old Kanye, like, dude, there's no way ghostwriters are, are writing this shit so cleverly for him all the time, bro. Cause there definitely was like a formula for Kanye. Like it was thought provoking, but also fucking hysterical. Like, yeah. Like how you get, like you must have the best ghostwriters ever, bro. Because this shit yeah. just seems clever, and it seems just like you whenever we get a, a glimpse of you in interviews and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I hope he didn't use a ghostwriter for the uh, bleach asshole verse on um. No, I don't know about him. I saw an interview okay. with uh, with Chance, and Chance was like, "Bro, really? Like this is what you're yeah. doing right now?" Like so. That uh, one seems very obvious that he didn't have a ghostwriter for it, yeah, but that, just that wanted to ahead. double check. Yeah, that was all him, apparently. <laughs> um, but speaking of that, you mentioned uh, Cuddy. So, um, apparently, there's a joint Cuddy-Travis Scott album coming out. So, your uh, your thoughts on the idea of those two? Because we got the Scots, like, three months ago. That was a hit. I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of the Fortnite stuff had to do it, but I, I, I still listen to the song right now on my yeah. work and stuff. So, the thoughts on a full album of those two going back and forth? Super excited. I think it'll be fire. I mean, I don't give a fuck if Psy High writes the whole thing. No. <laughs> if anything, it might make it better. Who knows? Facts. Yeah, I do super. I do, I do, but it's crazy how like 
Dude, there has to be some shit like if a kid like grows up like watching Michael Jordan and then like gets drafted by the Bulls and then plays for Jordan for like one more year before he retires. Like, yeah. dude, just literally Travis Scott's name is like Travis Scott because of Kid Cudi. So the fact that you're going to come out with a joint album with like your fucking hero yeah. is pretty fucking wild, dude. Just yeah. think about it. I was 19 when Man on the Moon dropped. So Cudi must have been, uh, I mean, uh, Travis Scott must have been like fucking 11 or 12. or some shit. Yeah, 12. Well, I don't how know. old is motherfucker? Hold on, hold on, let me check. Let me check. I, I, needed, I think he's like, I don't I'm think. I'm assuming uh, late 20s, like 28 or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. hold on, turn right now. This motherfucker is 28 years old. So he's three years younger than me. So if I was 18, 19, yeah, he was like 15, 16, bro. Uh-huh. So imagine being 15, 16, and then fast forward 15 years later, and it's like, yo, you're going to have an album with yeah. that guy. You look, so That's pretty fucking wild. Yeah, that's that's sick. It kind of reminds me of, uh, it was the same feeling I got seeing Joyner rap with Eminem, even though it wasn't a joint album. They've rapped a couple times with each other, I think. And I don't know, it's dope to see someone end up doing work with their childhood idol um it just makes you feel like i guess not to sound cliche but like dreams can become a reality yeah dude but i also remember that drake line where like idols become your rivals or something like that yeah. like jay-z or drake said that so yeah. dude who would you not want it or who would you want to meet like for you and i'll give my answer and but like be so afraid or so disappointed if it was like a letdown like if this guy was or a girl was a fucking like asshole to you and I was like, go fuck yourself, Blair. Leave me the fuck alone. Like, who, yeah. would, who would that person be? Uh, a couple of people that come to mind would be probably like Joe Rogan and Post Malone. Okay. Just because they're, they're like two of the celebrities that are have a huge fan base and are like dope people, or at least seem like dope people outside of this celebrity the bubble. Fandom? But yeah. like, yeah, the fandom. Um, so I feel like if they were assholes, I would be super disappointed. Whereas like someone like Kanye or some shit, I kind of expect him to be an you asshole expect, person. Yeah, yeah. So I, I wouldn't be too caught off guard in that case. Yeah. That's a good what one. About you? That's a good one. Uh, especially because Rogan. Rogan's like fucking 50, bro. Like there's no, yeah. and you just signed a hundred million dollars. Like, <laughs> yeah. yo, there's no reason for you to be yeah, a dick. You shouldn't like, have one fucking hateful bone yeah, in your body. You do a fucking podcast and you just got <laughs> fucking the bag, bro. So facts. Um, dude, for me, Honestly, it'd be Drake, Drake, and then a sports. Oh shit! Yeah, I don't know how I missed that one. Yeah, him yeah, too. It, it'd be Drake, and then a sports one because I'm a fucking sports head, dude. Fucking like Michael Jordan, bro. Like if they were like just dicks, it's like, bro, leave me the fuck alone. Like I don't want to talk to you. I'm, I'm like, damn, bro. Like you don't know how much of my life I've devoted <laughs> to you. Like you just say like, go fuck yourself. Like yeah. Like I fucking I've cried on floors at Sports Authority at the age of five, begging my mom to buy sneakers that were Jordan sneakers. And I'm like, you just tell me to go fuck myself now. All right, bro. Like, <laughs> I'll burn all this shit. I turn it. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I think for me, it'd be those two, bro. Like, that's a weird thing, bro, because I feel like, I mean, it's just natural. Like, yo, people become fans, and then you fucking build up this thing in your head, and then when they're not exactly what you want them to be, it's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, have, you ever way, had so have you ever met a celebrity, uh, and you're like, like, yo, yo, you're cold, leave me the fuck alone? Fortunately not. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um... Have you had some celebrity interactions that were actually fucking super dope? Uh, a couple. I mean, so my brother's uh, childhood friends with Alchemist. That's, I mean, that situation's not like, it's more biased because he fucking technically knows me. So he's not going to be a dick to his best friends, one of his best friends' brothers. But right, right, right. Um, I met Chris, uh, not Chris Paul. Um, damn, what's his name? Fast and Furious. Uh, he passed away. Paul, oh, Walker. Paul Walker? Yeah, so I met him because <coughs> he was kind of mutual friends with my brother. Um, again, another somewhat by situation, but he had no reason to really be nice to me or anything, but he was super down to earth. Um, nice. Didn't have that weird, like, oh, I'm a mega star and don't like want to talk to people kind of vibe. Um, he was a super genuine guy, so that passing was super unfortunate. Other than that, I haven't really had too many interactions i think i try to like unless it's an environment where like you can have a conversation i've never really felt compelled right, to right. 
to like out of your way. Of their business and shit. I might like nod at them or like dab them up real quick, but I've never been like, oh my god, man, like so tell me about like how Dude, things same, are. Same, bro. Like same. So like living in Charlotte, because obviously all like Charlotte's a very small community. So like when you see like the Hornet players out, like the like NBA team, like you can see them out anywhere, bro. So like, there was like and obviously. Um, I mean, I think everyone listening knows Jeremy Lin, like Jeremy Lin, the first Asian NBA player to be a fucking star. So dude, he was literally, it was me and my girl out, my girl at the time, and he was getting ice cream at a fucking, like, a hole-in-the-wall ice cream spot. But, like, this place was fire, right? So if you went there, like, you know you're getting the best ice cream. So he just happened to be in line in front of me. And I'm like, man, I fucking love this dude because he's a former Nick. But I'm like, man, I'm not really trying to fuck up his fucking Thursday night. He's just getting ice cream with his boys. Like, I'm like, yeah. like yo, let's do it. you want to talk for like 20 minutes about nothing? Like, <laughs> so yeah. I, I usually do that a lot, bro. But I think who have I met that's been like really fucking cool? Dude, I know because it's weird because like in Miami, we have so many DJs who are like, I guess somewhat like mini celebrities. But like, I've always just like kicked it with them. And like, they've always been down to earth because we always connect about like other shit besides music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dude, I did have a situation though in Miami where like, I don't know if you ever heard of this NBA player from like back in, not, not back in the day, like five, six years ago called uh, Big Baby Davis. He was like this really big dude, but was super agile, uh, played for the Celtics at the time. So um, well-known dude, really good player. Um, he was playing, I was like, dude, was like, I was like a junior in college. He, I was walking down Miami Beach. He's, he's walking in my direction, right? They just finished being the Heat. So I was like, and I, I fucking hate the Heat. So I legit went like, dude, big baby, great game. This motherfucker put his hands in his pockets and just went. And I was like, after that day, I was like, bro, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't go like, oh, fuck yourself. Like, I didn't say, yo, you're yeah. terrible. I was like, bro, great game. Well, some and people he, are like super weird about uh, like germs and fucking maybe, hugging and high of, fives and stuff. Yeah, maybe he was ahead of his time, but um, <laughs> at the moment I was like, bro, like you're literally like we're the same age, or like you're like two years younger, older than me, bro. Like I'm not some fucking like weirdo again, but maybe yeah. he's like you're fucking my height, you're coming at me about you know whatever. Like I don't have time for you. At the time though, I was like, fuck you. And then fast forward 12 years later, I'm still like, if I see him again, I'm gonna tell him go fuck yourself. No, so, you gotta slap the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, what happens to the NBA career now, motherfucker? That shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, man. So that's our, our idol story. Uh, let's see what else we had on here before we uh, get into heat of the week. Um, two, uh, two things, bro. So uh, you pick the topic, bro. We can talk about P and yeah. B rock talking shit about uh, Rod Wave and emo rappers, or do we think TikTok is going to be the platform that really helps a lot of like up and coming artists? You decide. We could do the P and B one. Okay, go. So. Uh, uh, no, like the backdrop behind yeah that. i don't know how it started but i know pmb basically called out um pmb rock called out emo rappers or saying me- rap music's too emo and depressing and yeah, he doesn't rock with that shit myself. yeah and i think Which i'm assuming rod wave to say when a lot of yeah. people have died like, it's right. pretty good and didn't rod wave rod is it rod wave yeah yeah rod wave came out and said basically defended that music i don't know if pmb called him out specifically or what but he so yeah he, he defended it and it was like bro like for, i think his first is like bro who are you talking to like address yeah. that shit like at somebody and then he went on to defend it and then I, we just saw the video i think from his like pmb's like lie that he's like fuck you like i'm not fucking apologizing or you know anyone to anyone oh. i fucking invented this whole like trapping and rapping and singing shit which is completely false but yeah. In the video, he's pretty much just sticking to his guns and saying, "Yo, what the fuck? I said it's what I what I mean." So, um, I mean, yeah. What are your thoughts on the whole fucking that whole back and forth? Yeah. Like, in general. Uh, I mean, I understand, like, I guess what where PMB is coming from, but at the same time, the beauty of the genre is you can pick and choose what you want to listen to, what you want to make. So I don't really understand this argument about it's too emo. Like, the whole purpose of making music in my opinion at least is is to vent and wear your heart on your sleeve talk about your emotions and all that shit whether they're good or sad or angry um so it's it's weird that he would want to basically shut that sub genre within hip-hop down if that's what helps these kids 
prevent themselves from killing themselves or whatever. I know, I know a lot of these artists who are quote unquote depressing um, have said in interviews and stuff like, you know, a fan ran up to me and was like, yo, I was going to kill myself until I heard this song. It really right. helped and me get through this breakup. Yeah. yeah. It helped me get me, helped get me through this breakup or whatever I was going through in life. And we don't hear a lot of those stories because, uh, I mean, it's just not publicized. A lot of those conversations are private. So I think PMB should take a moment to realize uh, that the music can help people cope with the shit they're going through. It's not just about, oh, you know, I want to turn up in the club and fuck a bunch of bitches. Like, people got real problems. Um, real problems, just, bro. And you, people don't publicize them. People listen to music to get through shit. I listen to music all the time if I'm whether I'm happy or sad. And it's just nice to be able to choose what you listen to based on your mood. So I don't really support the argument about it becoming too depressing. We gotta pick a fucking side. Do we want it to to be gangster rap and fucking murder shit all the time? Like, where are we gonna fucking pull this genre? We should have a wide variety of shit we can listen to. Yeah, dude, there's different, like, niches for everybody, bro. So it's weird also because, dude, he has multiple songs with XX, Existacion, which is, like, the king of emo rap. Yeah. So... Which sometimes you can even say he wasn't even a rapper, you know what I mean? Because like there's some songs where he's just like singing, so it was just weird. But I feel like it was very out of pocket um, and very directed at probably a very popular genre, a subgenre in hip hop, dude. Because with all due respect to this dude, like he he really isn't relevant right now. So maybe he's saying, let me fucking just you know poke the bear right now because I know I'm gonna get. We're, we're talking about it, right? Yeah. Um, I think everyday struggle spoke about it as well. Like, and the people are talking about this shit now. And maybe this is him, like you know, leading up to release of whatever the fuck he's working on, bro. Because I really don't think people have been checking for PNB. I know he had a time where he had a lot of features, bro, and they were really good songs. But dude, what was P? And I'm not being facetious, like or being trying to be a dick. What was his fucking hit song? That's a good question. Is that a rhetorical question? No, I don't know. Like I'm being no, I'm asked, like, I don't. I can't remember. No, I'm kidding. I have no fucking clue. And then that's like, not to, to say he's not a good artist because I, I actually do a lot like, like a lot of his features. So a lot of his features, I'm like, damn, this is fucking like he actually added to this song. But yeah. dude, I really can't but like I don't I don't think he ever really grasped a solo career. Um do I remember seeing him always at Rolling Loud, but I was like, damn, like I never saw him perform and then I do I really can't think of like what the fuck his his hit song was. Like I just me neither. Uh maybe the, what's that? Uh everyday we lit thing. I think that was the most common shit I've heard at least. That was it. That was it, bro. Okay. Everyday we yeah, that's yeah. Right. okay, cool. I'm like, bro, I know he had a fucking song. Very TikTok y song too. Very dude, yeah. That shit came out now, he'd be fucking gazillionaire, bro. But um yeah, man, it just seemed really fucking there was no need for it. Um like you said, bro, like I, I don't that's like fucking uh, Jay Z hopping on Instagram and saying, "Yo, fuck country music. You guys are fucking idiots. Go fuck your cousins." Like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, bro, like, there's yeah. no, there's no need for you to be like, if you don't like it, you don't like it, bro. Like, why would you go out of your way to just fucking say you guys are trash? Go kill you. You're making me want to, like, I don't know, bro. That that just seems like it's too easy of a low hanging fruit. Just to, like it just came across like, all right, let me fucking make fun of these people. I'm gonna get a lot of fucking comments about this. I'm now in the, in the limelight. And to my our point earlier about like Hardy being the stallion, bro, they're talking about you. Something good is happening in your career, right? Because in the yeah. day, like, this may just make someone go check out his music now. And they're like, oh well, it's kind of weird because you have a lot of emo songs yourself. Blah 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 blah. So, yeah, just seemed like a very uh, very low hanging fruit. Yeah. No, absolutely. All right, broski. Uh, so let's get into some uh, some fire music you've heard over the past seven days. So what is your idea? Of yeah. So besides that that new Drake, I've actually been listening to a different artist a bit more this um, past week. Um, Dave East. He released a album called bro, I Karma. Hate Dave East, bro. You do? Bro, For I, real? I mean, I'll listen to this album, bro. But uh -huh. the reason why I hate him—that's a strong term. I don't mean to cut you off. I really enjoyed his first fucking album. Like, uh -huh. really fucking enjoyed it. And then it was like four mediocre mixtapes. Uh -huh. So I'll give this one a try just for you. Mm -hmm. But I was just talking to my boy about like, right. bro, fuck Davies. So I, before, so I have to finish. Now I'm going to retract my st statement slightly. Uh, so he released Karma 3. And when okay. I say Heat of the Week, I, I say the album just because there's multiple songs I like on it. 
not okay. the album in full. Um, I think he's a great artist. I just think he doesn't have the best songs or great lyricists. He doesn't have the best songs. Um, so well, the two who songs. To, right? Who? Nas. Oh, for real? That's like okay, typical shit. Nas, right? Great yeah, lyricism man. and terrible That's beats. so disappointing because uh, well, I remember you saying Nas isn't your top five and he's always like been up there for me but the more i hear him and see features and shit i'm like damn this singer doesn't know how to make a song song yeah dude, that's what uh, it is he doesn't know how to make a song like great lyricist non-stop but t- which is weird because he had like did he have like the alchemist doing some of his beats for some time yeah he had every motherfucker doing his dude beat. He had, yeah it just like dude he had like kanye kanye yeah. couldn't even fucking say this motherfucker like i don't yeah. know it's just like he doesn't have an ear for it but okay yeah. my bad go, go to the song so I'll, i so, will listen to what yeah me. so if you're gonna listen to two songs listen to handsome and menace um i think the beats uh are just very chill and in my opinion the best two tracks on the album um again it's not nothing groundbreaking it's just a nice uh break from the mumble autotune shit and it's Mm -hmm. very smooth he's he's new york to his core yeah uh-huh. So I just, I don't know, it's gritty shit that makes me feel good riding around. Uh, handsome and Menace. Mm-hmm. Um, but beyond that, yeah, I was going to basically echo the same points you made was that his camp needs to do something. I think Wayno even managed him. I think so. so yeah, yeah, he did. It's like, he did. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how to help this nigga at this point. Because I guess he was kind of stubborn about his direction and yep. uh, who knows. But I mean, he's making money. Sometimes that's like the best outcome is like you're never that popping guy that has to deal with a bunch of bullshit but at the same time you still have this like cult following that will fucking Almost like a Russ like right a to the trenches Russ. yeah yeah minus yeah I'm probably getting Russ money but uh he, I mean I've seen a couple like behind the things it's like he became pretty popular first of all, he's an actor as well he also he's like in the Wu-Tang um documentary on Hulu so he played a method man um he does some other acting roles um, I mean, apparently he's doing pretty well, bro. So I mean, we we might be crazy for not liking his music, but um, the album that I do like from him is Paranoia: True Story. And dude, there's some fucking yeah. bangers on this song, on this album, yeah. bro. He has one song with fucking um, French Montana called Maneuver. Oh my god, bro, that fucking beat selection, that one is fire. But dude, that's so like, he really the first album drop really fucking piqued my interest. And bro, I've been checking his next fucking three or four albums. I'm like, bro, this is it. This is what you got for me. So I'll give this one a chance. But uh, yeah, I was I was literally talking shit about him like three days ago, bro. Like I was like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Why does he keep coming out with music? Have um, you heard Type of Time by him, by the way? No. Good. Now that I think about it, it's probably my favorite song that I've heard that he's released. Um, okay. The video is cool, but that beat is super fire. Um, I feel like he does well on that kind of shit. But again, he needs he needs like a producer that'll make him produce tracks with like I don't know the Chris Browns and Drakes of the world that kind of just have a a balance, kind of like how Rick Ross does it. He has that like boss hip hop shit that you could still vibe to. That's not it's not trap in a sense, but it's also not too boom bap to the point where you're like I can't listen to this shit over and over. Yeah, but I think to your point, I think he generally. Um, obviously, we don't know the whole thing with like Wayne or whatever, but I think he generally just didn't want to go in that. If anything was going to make him come across too poppy, he didn't yeah. want it. He didn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, that's fine. Really, it's career decision. Yeah, like he, yeah, exactly. But I think he generally was like, I want my fucking the the hood to know me, and then maybe you heard of me, but like I don't go yeah. fuck if you know me. So maybe, dude, kudos to me. Nipsey type shit. Because yeah. I know he and Nipsey were pretty close. Right, right, right. Yeah, it, facts. And then I think it really is, bro. Like, on the ground level, bro, like, you think about us, like, if I'm, a, and think about these guys who, like, come from nothing, quote unquote, right? If I'm literally making more money than I ever need, families taken care of, why do I give a fuck if I have one or one million fucking listeners? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, like, so I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Again, Same. musically, I just don't check for it, but I, from his point of view, he's like, bro, why would I give a fuck if you like my music or not? Which is, like, yeah. the cool thing about, like, I remember Mac Miller when he dropped. I think the feminine divine and he had an interview on the breakfast club he's like bro i honestly don't even know if people buy my shit anymore like, i don't care like this is like what i want to do and like i'm gonna go perform it and they show up and it's great if they don't it's fine so like yeah bro if you have that level of clarity like yo kudos to you yeah. um 
for me though, bro, again, has to be Laugh Now, Cry Later, featuring Little Dirk. Um, do not stop finding any excuse to fucking just bring that shit back when I'm like, you know, I have the ox cord at my, my aunt's house. So, yeah, man, that's the uh, that's that's the one for me, bro. That's gonna be the one for me for a while. Nice, can't be mad at that one. No, can't be mad at all, bro. All right, man. Anything else before we uh we dip? You're going to Utah this weekend or next weekend? Not next weekend. Uh, okay. We're gonna have a long ass fucking next eight days, nine days of my life because um, of work, but. Once I go to Utah, I'm going to be like Kanye. I'm going to be fucking locked in my room doing did you nothing. See, did you see Kanye pull up to the Chick-fil-A out there in Wyoming? No. Oh, bro. He oh, legit. wait. I think I saw all the fucking fans and shit, like, took photos with them. What are the, the Chick-fil-A workers? So oh, he, like, I didn't they, see that. They closed, the, yeah, they closed the Chick-fil-A for him, and then he had all the workers singing Close on Sunday. You're my chick like and like, like it was it was dope, bro. First nice. of all, there was literally no social distancing. I was like, bro, yeah. like Corona's real. Um, but maybe that in Wyoming. But uh yeah, that was that was cool. Nice. Yeah, I gotta check that out. Uh yeah, man, I think for me, man, just obviously everyone stay safe out there. If you're in LA on the West Coast, I mean, the heat wave is for real, so fucking yo yeah, hydrate. You know, because damn, bro, I've seen people like I've heard like crazy, like people just fucking like collapsing or some shit. Like, it's like, bro, that shit's hot out there, bro. So. Shit, I was about to collapse mid episode. I've been drinking coffee. <laughs> my throat's been drying up. I've been trying so hard to get the words out of my mouth. Like, that's really that's been the struggle this this hour. So I hope oh, you yeah, motherfuckers my man is, my man is sick and I'm fucking, shit. I'm on a, I just came off a four hour fucking drive, bro. So if you don't think we're committed to this shit, you guys don't know yeah. shit. So, but we appreciate you. The views have been great. Um, the comments have been awesome. The, uh, the back and forth. So we, we, we definitely appreciate you. Uh, this is episode 42, but we got plenty more in the books for you. For sure. And don't forget to check out the, uh, the Spotify and Apple Music playlist. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. Love you, man. All right, man. Love you too. Peace. Peace.